Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and welcome to yet another advanced Java chess engine tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be actually applying a random number generator to produce a Zorbish hash key. So before I get started, let me give you a quick recap of how we're going to go about this. What we do is we go over the chessboard and for each square and for each piece type on that square we have a specific random number that we generate at the program startup. And then what we do is we go through each position and for each piece at each square, we XOR that random number associated with that to each other to get um, sort of mesh all those numbers into a unique number representing the entire position. And not only do we XOR all the numbers for the pieces, but also for castling rights and empassant rights as well as which side it is to move. So we take all the aspects of a position and we XOR the unique numbers based on the aspects of that position to get this unique number. So let me show you how we do it. Basically I've created these arrays to represent all of those aspects of a chess position. And then what we do is I created this method called Zorbist fill array which will fill all of these variables with random 64-bit numbers. So it's fairly straightforward. What we do is we go through each color type and each piece type and each of the 64 squares and we set the uh, corresponding spot in the array to a random number. So the entire array will get filled. Then we go through each of the eight columns and we set that to a random number. Same with castling. And we set the Zorbis black to move to a random number as well. Now the efficiency of this is not important because we are only going to run this at the startup. So even if you have a more efficient way, what you're really looking for is readability here. And the reason we don't ever change this during the program is we want the same position given at two different times during the program's runtime to give the same number. So we want to keep these random numbers constant from the start of the program. So now when we have all these arrays with random numbers, we need to go through the position and figure out exactly uh, which numbers to XOR together. So here's how I've done it. What we start off is with a long uh, return Z key. And this is going to be the thing that we return at the very end of this method. And we started off at zero with all the bits therefore are at zero. And then what we do is we go through each square of the 64 squares and if the square is a white pawn then we re then we XOR to the return value the corresponding random number. If it's a black pawn we, re we XOR the corresponding uh, black pawn for that square and so on. And we go through each of the 12 pieces. Six for each color. So it's a big, long, if-else, if-else thing. Now, I have specifically ordered these from the least uh, valuable piece, basically pawns, through knights, bishops, rooks, queens, and finally the king. And I've done that for a couple reasons. For one, uh, the piece type, which would be, in this case, the second element in the array, I have just called 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I've kept those in order. So 0 is the least valuable piece, 1s are the second most valuable piece, and so on, all the way to the fifth most valuable piece, which is the king. So it's just in order that way. As well, it is done because in order of probability. As we scan through, what is the most probable piece that any given square will be, besides empty, obviously? Well, it would be a pawn. So we put those first to avoid unnecessary if-else statements. And then if it's not the white pawn, then it's maybe the black pawn. And we go on and on, and the rest are usually about the same. Um, there's usually two of them for most games. Now the queen is second last, and there's usually one, but sometimes there's more. And then the very last is the kings, which we know there's always only one of. So we know that 
looking through each square, there's only a 1 in 64 chance that this piece, this square, will contain a king. So we're just trying to be efficient. And if you really wanted to do it faster, you could even perhaps have an if the square is empty or something like that um, at the beginning. And then you could skip all of these if statements because most likely most squares are empty and don't contain anything. So that's just the idea. It's really just for speed that I've ordered it this way. All right, so let's move on here. What I continue to do, I go through all the empassant um, possibilities. So if the current board position's empassant is equal to the file mask of a certain column, then we return, then we XOR the appropriate random number for that empassant in that column. Same with all the castling rights. If, if either any of the castling rights, then we XOR the appropriate castling Zorbist uh, random number, as well as for the white to move. And then at the very end, we return the final answer. So let me show you how this is actually going to work if we run this and test this out. So what we're going to need to do is first at the start of the program, we need to Zorbist fill array. So initialize the Zorbist random numbers because at the start, otherwise they'd all be zeros or whatever is default. And then we need to get the Zorbist hash of a certain position and print it out. So what I've done here is we fill the arrays of Zorbis right at the beginning of the program. Then we import the starting position. And then we're going to print that position. And I'm going to print it out twice. Be and in between these, the position has not changed. So the Zorbis key for both, when I print out the position, should be identical. And then this board position is a little different. You'll notice there's a little one here. So there's a missing black pawn. So the Zorbis key should be different on the third printout. Now in this input print, I have changed it up a little bit. So first we draw the array, and then I print out Zorbis hash, and notice it's just print, not print line, so it keeps on the same line. And then I print out the get Zorbis hash, so the certain number that represents the current position. So what we're going to do here is run this, and hopefully we're going to get two printouts with the same number and position, and one printout with a different number. So let's have a look here. Here's the starting position. And we can see, we can just look at the first few digits uh, to make sure that it's unique. We don't need to memorize the entire length of the thing. So we start off with a negative 364. We look at the next position, also the starting position, and it's the same, negative 364 and on. Now we look at this next position. You notice there's an empty spot, a missing pawn here, and the number is different. Now it's negative 569. So it has a different number representing a different position. So we know that we have done this uh, fairly correctly so far. So that is really how uh, this works, and you can see that it is working correctly. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe, and until next time, enjoy Java.